Hello, my last video was a review of sorts of the Soma Laboratory Enner synth that I have here. And I was very enthusiastic about this synth and I still am. So let's demonstrate that further by doing a challenge that I've done before, which is always a lot of fun, which is making a full track using only this synth. So um, I talked about the great features of this machine and also some of the limitations. Let's get this out of the way. I'm gonna use only sounds from Enner, but I'm going to do some, well, resampling, um, loading the sounds up in samplers because this thing doesn't have envelopes other than how you control it with your fingers. So um, I will need to do a little bit of resampling or resynthesis, but all the source material is going to be from Enner. So let's just get to it. I have an audio track loaded up here. Let's make it audible and turn up the volume here. That also helps. There we go. Okay, let's start with the basics, maybe something clicky, like a kick for a kick or a drum sounds. These areas here generate pulses, different speeds, and then they go through a low pass filter here. Again, if you didn't watch the, the previous video, basically, you play this instrument by completing the circuit between an output like here and an input if you want to know more about how it works go back to that video so we get these clicks here low clicks let's record that and let's do it mono so i'm just going to take the first channel so there are two outputs it's basically a stereo out with the left and right sides here um, but I can also just do one and then we have this I'm gonna lower this because it's overloading the input of my audio interface that's not a good thing okay very simple here and let's just throw that recording into a MIDI channel, into a simpler. Let's up the tempo here. Of course, we're making techno. You see that it generates sort of typical square waves. Several pulses. Let's just get one. That could be a kick. basis of a kick let's add maybe some sub filter here I don't think this is cheating adding some low frequency content here that's actually sounding like a kick Maybe some um, distortion, some decapitation, even more kicky. I like this one the best. Okay. Let's record a bass. 
simple. I'm just going to go for mono again. This is basically a higher frequency um, multiplication of this. These are all related. I could use this one as well. I think that has quite a bit of low end. Let's have a look at the spectrometer. Yeah, let's go for that one. It's actually nice. I'm just going to record one note. That's all I need. And again, dragging it onto a mini channel automatically creates a simpler, don't you just love life, pun intended. <clears throat> then could you reuse this for other things as well? A sort of a pitch to this kick. Let's go for a very simple pattern here, as I do. I'm thinking maybe some volume envelope. Well, if we switch it to a sampler, we get a lot more features. And we can do a, a pitch envelope here. Did I say volume envelope? I meant pitch envelope. Create sort of a second kick. in uh, in the sampler that has the envelope as well of course so uh, let's try that I mean I could go on forever changing this trying to shape it um, let's just start building continue building and we'll see and Try to mix too much as I go along, maybe. So uh, let's just record something. Um, so we have a low to low mid bass sound now, maybe uh, something in a low mid to, I don't know, regular mid register. Let's go for stereo here so I can record channels one and two on my uh, interface. Let's see, I have to solo this. And now, left and right now realizing that probably my recording software video recording software isn't recording this in stereo if that's true I apologize I started this I'm gonna finish it <laughs> Thank you. 
that I think the last or the one before last sounded best. Tune this one a little bit lower. So it's in tune with this bass. Maybe this one as well. This is a very dry sounding. I'll add some reverb. Um, let's go here. Use the trusted Valhalla room for this. Now maybe for some noisy stuff, <clears throat> the bar here at the bottom outputs noise, which I can then send through the different filters. Let's turn this on again. Or the delay. So these are different tuned filters. And you can sort of transition between them if your finger overlaps. So the fades one in and other out, which sort of gives a filter sweep like effect. And then this one is pure unfiltered output, and this one is delay, awesome sounding delay. Ah.
just recorded that feedbacking delay. Let's see what I can do with that. Maybe some sort of pad sound. Let's see. Some background noise here. One cool thing is that this is a long sample that I recorded, so maybe let's go for four bars and have it change over time a little bit. <clears throat> One long note. Don't really like how this rhythm sounds, this bass rhythm, so let's try this. Okay. Let's try some percussion -y things here. Record some more noises, noise. This is one of the really cool things of this machine that you can do this sort of phrase like things. Something like this that is actually a response to the call of this mid rangey bass sound. Something like that. Let's record it. You can just leave this as an audio clip, of course. I'm happy with how it sounds. Send that to a delay, return channel.
Nope. Not the compressor, the echo. Some reverb as well. Fiddly little things here. I need another audio channel to record. Okay. Now let's go for some short percussive stuff. Just gonna record some noise. Through the different filters. And without filtering in mono, and then I'll just use that to create some percussion. For instance, a shaker, let's do a stereo shaker. Just grouping this simpler, let's duplicate again, but let's, let's just up the volume before I do that. Okay, very simple stereo shaker, just pan one left, one right, uh, create a very basic 16th note shaker pattern. Maybe randomize a little bit. This is actually very random, but I'm gonna reduce the amount here to something like this. Actually, it could be cool if they're not the same, the amount of velocity that goes to volume. Maybe it's more for one side than the other. Um, and then it's just a matter of making stereo is having the sample start at different points. playing with envelopes. Let's just quickly, yeah, of course I could save all of this as a, as a, as a rack, as a group. Um, save some time here. So now I have uh, control over the envelope for both left and right channels at the same time. That doesn't sound quite right. <laughs> um, what am I doing wrong? Why no sound from this one? 
very strange. Ah, because it's a stereo sample with the sound only on one side. Okay, interesting. Uh, how do we solve that? Hmm. Invert. sides. I need to bend them here. Let's, let's make this the left one and then the other one the right side. Now it's a stereo thing. Making the tack longer turns it into a shaker like sound. And now it's a stereo shaker. Okay, I'm creating another mini channel and because I can do more with these um, uh, noise samples. How about just a hi-hat, but let's layer it with, um, with something else. So let's record something from this side. Uh, other side of the, of the instrument. And these three bottom outputs here, one, two, three, are ring mods. I'm gonna use this later, but I'm gonna see, go for a high pitch one. So what is this useful for? Well, let's see. Go 
to layer this up. And just create a simpler here. Let's start with soloing that and then layering it up with the um, with the noise. Let's just make a basic one eighth hi hat pattern here. Doesn't sound like a hi hat, but wait. Turns out these ring modded sounds are very good for that kind of metallic effect. Again, I need to make sure that this isn't just heard in the left channel again if this is coming to you in mono i apologize let's use this built-in filter here And that's a hi-hat with uh, a noise and a metallic component to it. It's, it's quiet, let's up the volume a little bit. Get a bit of some, some low end here. Okay, what else? saying that I was going to use the ring mod for something else as well so 
This was the idea that I had. You can do pretty cool pad like sort of weird ominous sounds with this. Uh, let's record some of this. Too bad that abrupt ending. Oh, let's see how this works out. If I just slap on a reverb here and some EQ, some high pass filtering to get rid of the low end rumble. Like a typical analog synth, this machine outputs a lot of frequency content, different frequencies. Made that a little bit with some auto filter, some slow sweeping panning. A little bit of fake sidechain from my trusted LFO tool. What else? One thing I haven't used is the, the piezo pickup. So the way that this thing can also process acoustic sounds. Let's see. What did I just do? Threw away. <laughs> I need to create a new audio channel. Yeah. So if I place one finger on this thing here and then to an output, then that records sounds from the case tapping scratching and this is where this uh, spring comes in and where you can also use proper bands Thank you. 
once again I'm gonna drop that into a MIDI channel to give me a little bit more control over how I use this sound. I thought maybe I can slice this into these different parts, but it's just recognizing a lot of points in between. Maybe if I dial back the sensitivity and move them along a little bit. Can I do that? I guess not, but I can delete and add them. Slicing points. Maybe like this. I'm sure there's a smarter way to do this, but I don't really know how. Let's just use the next one. Oh. Why no sound? Come on. different ones in different places in a very long loop. I'm going to filter out some low end. one isn't doing anything.
Oh, now I remove one of those markers and now they're all... Oh, this is actually hard. <laughs> this one's working. That one, no. Something like this. Okay, well, I think I've gathered enough material here. Um, to just do a quick arrangement and uh, wrap this up. I'm just gonna label these channels here very quickly. Make it a little bit easier. rhythm I think this is like the response really and it will be the call this one bad and this is also sort of a response Sixteenth note shaker and eighth note hi hats. Okay, so let's just make a, a quick arrangement here. To make this easy, I'm going to do a subtractive arrangement where I just fill out the whole timeline with um, with these clips and then cut away at them. Have stuff come in and go out, and then we'll see how that uh, how that works out. Some things will be playing all the time, like this noise rhythm thing is probably not going to stop anywhere in the track. Other stuff, of course, needs to not be there all the time. Although it is actually a challenge to have as many parts going on all the time at the same time and just using variations or automation to uh, create tension and release to build it up and um, make it go back down again. So very simple here. If I just group these, kick and sub and then Prince do a big break. Somewhere before the halfway point. I have my way of working here where and when it's a high pass filter break. I tend to make the clips white. A fade, a fade would be um, gray. I automate the filter on off here. Like this. So that will be a break. I do a smaller one here. 
Maybe just cut out the uh, kick for a bar. I'm just sort of randomly doing this really. Let's make this loop a little shorter anyway. Maybe very slowly fade in this uh, bad sound. That's not started on the at the beginning. Maybe started here, like this. Shall we have the shaker from the beginning? Why not? Definitely these call and response things they need to they need to evolve. So let's not start with those all at the same time. Um, no, doing this wrong. <laughs> This one. Let's fade in the shaker here. Slowly. Filter, low pass filter in the, uh, what's we call it, synth? What shall we call it? Mid synth call. Start this later as well.
let's move this little break here. And I'm gonna add uh, another white noise thing for a symbol like uh, thing. <laughs> I can just borrow the white noise from clip from another channel, this one. Just happily making up this arrangement as I'm going along. And of course, this is just going to be something to listen back to later. Always subject to change. Okay, let's see. Some sort of a symbol like sound here. Again, let's leverage the idea that this could be stereo. A lot of good techno that I'm listening to has this sort of very stereo produced sound. With almost all the elements like that on the stereo, placed in the stereo field. Um, not so much placed, but actually being stereo themselves. Uh, let's see. samples are actually too short oh yeah let's go for this What I can do is just make the samples lower so they're longer and then filter out even more. Something like this. What's a good length for the decay here? About a second. some fake side chaining. Yeah, make the attack softer as well. Something like that, yeah. Come on. Let's just 
Paris symbol. Well, it's not going to win any prizes for realism, but... Of course, on several of the parts here, there are LFOs running, sort of keeping things moving along. I think I'm going to call this day. I'm going to call this an arrangement. It's definitely not done, but it's, uh, well, what it is, is a full length, length sorry, track, something to listen to. Um, next time, see if I want to work on it some more. We'll see. So yeah, that's it for today. I have no idea how long I've been going with this, but uh, it's time to wrap it up. This is a full track. All the sounds were generated with um, Enner, the great synth by Soma Laboratory that uh, I've got on my hands on recently. Uh, you can do a full track with this. Some pretty convincing sounds in there. Um, even stuff like kick drums, even though there are no pitch envelopes, you can still make some cool sounds with this and actually a full track in a reasonable amount of time if you are motivated. So that's it for today. Please like and subscribe. Stay tuned for the next one. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.